In lecture three, we introduced the idea of inheritance. The is a kind of relationship that you can create between, for example, a manager being a kind of employee. In this lecture, we're going to continue looking at matters to do with inheritance. First of all, on slide two, notice that we've declared this class oops manager colon employee to indicate that oops manager is derived from the employee class. Now, either we forgot to say public in front of employee or we intentionally left out public in front of employee. And so what we get here is what's called private inheritance. And I say inheritance in quotes because it's not really an is a kind of relationship any longer. It's better to think of oops manager as being implemented in terms of employee because what was public within the employee class is now going to be private through the oops manager class. And so it's not appropriate to say that an oops manager is a kind of employee because behaviors that an employee has are not going to be visible through an oops manager object. Here on slide three, we have an example program using the employee class and the oops manager class. And on slide four, I have a diagram illustrating what the problems are here. Okay, so in slide three, we're saying that Fred is an employee object. Fred is initialized with an ID of six, a name of Fred, a rate of 63.33. Next, we declare an oops manager object called Glenn. And we'll assume that we have a properly written constructor for the oops manager class that takes the first three arguments, seven, Glenn, and 70.17, and passes those down to the base class constructor. Oops manager here also has a title, which is going to be boss, and a budget, which is going to be three quarters of a million dollars. So far, so good. Now the problem comes in here when we say fred.getRate, this works fine because getRate is one of the public member functions of the employee class. But for Glenn, everything that was public in the employee base class is now private. And so when I try to find out what Glenn's rate is by saying glenn.getRate, I'm going to get an access violation error from the compiler. If we take a look at our diagram here on slide four, here's what's happening. I use this horizontal line in here in my class diagram to indicate the separation between the public facilities on the top and the private facilities underneath. So the public stuff is what can be accessed from within main or from within any, any other part of the code that's using employee objects. The private stuff cannot be directly accessed. The private stuff can only be accessed and modified by the member functions for the class. But over here for Glenn, the oops manager, notice where I have my horizontal line. The only things that are public within an oops manager are the two functions, set budget and get budget. Everything else, including public members for the employee class, print, set rate, get rate, those things are now private if I attempt to access those through Glenn. Continuing here in slide three, I can set up P as a pointer object to an employee. P contains the address of Fred. Fred is an employee. And so if I say P arrow print, that will invoke the employee print function displaying information about Fred. But it turns out that because the inheritance I have for oops manager is private rather than public, I'm no longer permitted to take the address of an oops manager and store that into an employee pointer. So that is also going to be flagged as an error. Most of the time, private inheritance is probably created by mistake by simply forgetting to use the public keyword when you specify the base class for the derived class that you're creating. In addition to public and private, C++ offers a third sort of intermediate access protection specifier, protected. Now, 
when something is public in a class, that means that that facility, whatever that public facility is, whether it's a member function or a data member or a type, can be accessed from any code anywhere in the entire program. It's not restricted to just the member functions of the class. If something is private within a class, then only the code within that class itself as well as any friend functions that you have specified are going to be able to access those private things. Now protected is sort of halfway between. Protected data can be accessed by the class code and friends just like the private data can, but it can also be accessed from derived classes. That is if I have a my class here with protected members and from my class I derive a class called my bigger class then the member functions in my bigger class will be able to mess around with the protected data contained within the base my class. Struestrup basically considers that he was sort of tricked into adding this protected access specifier relatively early in the design of the C++ language one of the people at Bell Labs where he worked was using C++ to develop a windowing system and this person kept showing up at Struestrup's office and saying look in my design for this windowing system I really have to have protected data members or I'm not going to be able to get my stuff to work it's not going to be efficient I really have to have protected data so Struestrup relented somewhat reluctantly and introduced protected into C++ and later Struestrup discovered that the same guy who had begged for protected data was now going around to Unix conferences and delivering talks about how bad protected data was and how he had had to eliminate all of the protected data from his windowing system code in order to get the bugs out. So a bit of a slap in the face to say the least. Now protected member functions which are functions within a class that only derived classes can call are fine because these member functions will control access to the underlying private data of the base class. Also you can make an argument that protected data members are okay in what are called abstract classes an abstract class defines an interface for a related collection of kinds of higher level classes and we'll get into the details of how to define and use abstract classes next but just to be absolutely absolutely clear in this course public data members that are not const and protected data members in a class that is not abstract are forbidden are not to be used I, I wish I could do an echo effect on that. No public data members other than const. No protected data members other than an abstract classes. So what do we mean by abstract classes? Let's take a look at that starting here on slide 8. The classes that we've been dealing with so far, like employee, are real classes. You can really have an employee object in your program. The employee has an ID, a name, a rate, and various behaviors. We can get the rate, set the rate, get the name, print the employee, and so forth. Sometimes though, some kind of category that it makes sense for us to talk about is abstract rather than real. For example, shape is a category of things that might occur in a graphical application. We talk about shapes without any confusion and we know that kinds of shapes are lines, circles, squares, rectangles, polygons and so forth and we know that given a shape we should be able to draw one, we should be able to rotate one, we should be able to scale it, we should be able to transform it to some new location but we can only do those kinds of operations on specific kinds of shapes that is we can draw a line, we can draw a circle, we can draw a square but we can't write down the code for drawing a shape. 